I'm afraid things have taken a turn for the worse. And now we're all being readmitted back to Attaway General, baby. The hospital staffed by young, famous TikTok stars who are ready at a moment's notice to stand around arguing while I die. Where every illness causes you to fall asleep mid-conversation. And specially designated 15-year-olds are available around the clock to violate your privacy and judge you for your medical condition that they know nothing about. This is the world's only hospital that guarantees a painful, complicated recovery for even the most basic procedures, where the drama is cranked all the way up to 11 and rubber glove usage is down somewhere around zero. So make sure you're up to date with your tetanus shot and join us for another clip breakdown at Attaway General, baby. Hello television viewers, my name is Nick. Thank you so much for joining me once again on my channel for another installment of Clip Breakdown. This is the playlist where we dive into the world's best and worst movies, media, and television and figure out what's happening and why do I say boo to it. As you'll notice, we've got some other plant friends in the frame with us today. I ordered a Monstera plant and those plants over there and I'm gonna water them and feed them and give them all the sunshine. They're gonna keep me company while I rip apart Attaway General episodes three and four. But but before we get into it, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up if you want to see even more clip breakdowns just like this. And most importantly, if you're new to my channel, I would love to have you click that subscribe button. It looks like that down there. That way you never miss new videos from me. I upload two new ones every week, so turn on notifications and you'll always be in the know. Also, there's a link below to merch and other stuff like that, so whatever. This episode begins with Nina, played by, mm, why do I always set myself up to say their names? Maddie Monroe. She's giving Rosie and Kit their assignments for the day. A young patient. And right off the bat, Kit does a great job at reminding us all that she really cares about her patients. Well, actually just one patient in particular. Molly, this is Kit and Rosie. They're going to be your chaperones today. Actually, I was hoping to be assigned to Holden's case, but you're assigned to Molly. Hi, Molly. Hi, Molly. Sorry to hear about your broken ass bone or whatever, but I've got a boyfriend in room 3B. This girl does not care about patients. She just likes Holden, who has a heart issue. We saw in the beginning of last episode, she eked out one tear when she saw him on a gurney. Molly, on the other hand, is not in validated by this slight from her new caretaker. In fact, she seems like a really lively, energetic young girl. It's almost like she doesn't need to be in a hospital until... So, who's Holden? None of your business. He's a cute boy she has a crush on. Do not. Do too. Do not. Molly! No pulse. I'll start CPR. Okay, why did Molly just go from having her birthday party at Coldstone Creamery to being in a coma? How did this happen? Does she have that disease where if too many people are not paying attention to her, she dies? Because that's what I have. Very relatable. Kit knows just what to do, and she jumps into action, giving Molly CPR, and she definitely needs it. Oh wait, Kit, did she just open her eyes? No, maybe they just fluttered. I think she still needs CPR. Nope, her eyes are open. This girl's awake. She's faking it. Get her out of here. Kit just flips her bed over. It is weirdly hard to keep your eyes closed if you're pretending to be asleep. Have you ever noticed that? Clearly Molly was struggling with that issue. Maybe it's because kids at that age don't have the same muscle independence in their eyes. Once again, Dr. Henry is really impressed by Kit's ability to jump in and get helpful. Good job. The first five minutes are the most critical. That's why I thought it would take 30 seconds here while she's still dying to let you know. Also, do we feel like maybe this is a good reason why we should have a trained medic medical professional monitoring these patients at all times. Because apparently even the ones who are okay for just like getting supervised by the babysitter's club turn on a dime in two seconds and suddenly find themselves coding all out of nowhere. Do you guys remember Dixie D'Amelio? She's playing Georgia in this movie and she's still getting it on with Griffin, but his name is something else, the surgical protege. They keep sneaking off into the supply room together and even Maeve notices this time. She's someone who's like a year older than the other kids. Meanwhile, Jack, our favorite apathetic bad boy with the curly hair, he has been assigned to Kit's boyfriend, Holden. And it makes a lot of sense because when I meet a 13 year old kid who acts like a jerk to everyone he meets, the first thing I think is how can we get him in touch with some terminally ill people? So I'm supposed to offer you pudding or juice or whatever? Wants him? No. I just want to throw this out there for the creators of Attaway General. People do also eat solid food in hospitals. Seriously, I think every single episode they've talked about putting her juice here. And I'm like, do you guys even have medicine? Where's the pharmacy? Holden is like, oh yeah, what kind of pudding do you have? Do you have fix my heart hole flavor? That would be great. Maeve gets a little territorial and even confronts Georgia at the coffee pot where we know people don't play at a hospital. Okay, this is Harold, the coffee maker. Maeve basically tells Georgia that her boyfriend, what is his name? Jack. 
no, Will. Maeve tells Georgia that every year Will finds some other new piece of fresh meat to flirt with and she should just get out of it while she still can. You should probably walk away before you get your heart broken. Thanks for the tip. Bitter much? Go feminism. Well, I get that they were trying to show Georgia was like a cool person by salting that woman's coffee. I think she could have just gotten her point across verbally. I would have been like, Maeve, listen, sweetie, I get that you're jealous. It's really obvious and I'm so happy for you. I can also tell that you tried to apply like three different shades of eyeshadow this morning and they've all blended into one orange garage door on your eyelid. And now you're gonna come up here and talk to me at the coffee pot? No, not today. That's how I handle confrontations at work. I get fired all the time. Also, I love the performative salting of the coffee. It's like, first of all, that's clearly a sugar container. No one puts salt in a sugar container that pours like that. Also, is salt bitter? Bitter much? Couldn't she have said salty much? Cause Salt. Whatever. You got it, Dixie. You got her. Meanwhile, Rosie and Kit are overseeing Molly. Glioblastoma is rare. It accounts for less than 3% of pediatric cancer cases. I don't think she wants to hear about that right now. I'm used to it. Still, that's not our job. We're not doctors. And never will be with that attitude. Kit is fully like, okay, Molly, so here's the scoop on what's fun about your childhood cancer. Like, are you joking me right now? Put that chart down. Rosie seems to be the only one who can even remember that they're not doctors. She's like, hmm, I would love to perform open heart surgery right here in the hallway with dirty hands, but I just remembered I have SATs to study for because I'm a child. Kit is so full of attitude. I don't know who told you that you could become a doctor by walking around a hospital and bugging people for a full year, but that's not it. You do eventually have to read a book. I'm just gonna say it. I think they made a mistake by casting Diego Martyr as Jack in this show because Jack is supposed to have this like emotional thing that's building up. He's becoming more empathetic and caring about patients more. But whenever Diego appears on screen, he seems more concerned about hiding the fact that he has braces. Should I get your parents? No, I don't want to talk to anyone. Just need a moment to be upset, okay? I get that. Oh, having a hole in your heart's pretty relatable, huh? No, but we both have the same teacher for social studies, so I felt like that was pretty relatable. Where is everybody's parent? Jack is not equipped to handle this, like, conversation. He's like, hole in your heart, huh? Where is that pudding cup? Back in Molly's patient room, Kit gets a rude awakening of her own. Kit. Do you mind stepping outside? I need to speak with Molly and her mom. Oh, now patient confidentiality matters. Kit is like, fine, I already read her chart anyway. But Kit gets a little sensitive when she realizes things are not what she thinks. Oh, Rosie, no, not you. You're fine. You can stay. Just Kit. Are you kidding? Excuse me? Can I speak with you for a moment? I saved her life. All Rosie did was some arts and crafts. I should stay. Kit, this is extremely inappropriate. I need you to leave. Yeah, not only is it inappropriate, but it's also just annoying, Kit. Why don't you just go sit down on a bench somewhere and read your little notebook? She's like, all Rosie did was arts and crafts. When did we ask you to do anything else? All we want you to do is sit there and put some pom-poms on some construction paper with her. We're not asking you to become the next leader of reading about cancer. Like, that's not gonna help anyone. Kit confuses me because she really signed up to be a volunteer in a hospital thinking it was gonna be some sort of glorious job full of thanks. No, you'll be cleaning bedpans. Thank you. Once Kit is out of the room, Dr. Henry is finally able to go back and talk with Molly about the important medical information concerning her health. So let's see what you've been drawing. Oh no, he just wants to see the butterfly she drew earlier today. When does Molly's medical treatment start? Because her childhood cancer looks a lot like being a healthy 10 year old. Although on the surface, it seemed like Georgia did not believe Maeve's warning. She clearly does take it a little seriously because now she's more concerned about Will's flirting. And I'm just like, which is it? You're mad at Maeve for warning you about Will? I think you're jealous, here's some salt. But now you're also mad at Will for doing the things that Maeve pointed out? Like, who do you believe? You're just team Georgia, I think. Georgia's like, I'm not sure how I feel, okay, but I know that I hate boys and I also hate girls. Do you want to go talk in the shed? Go ask Maeve or that other girl. Yeah, go talk to that other girl whose character we forgot to establish or at least give a name. Back in the break room, Kit finally snaps at Rosie and is like, listen, I'm sick of the way you're helping sick kids. All you do is suck up to the doctors and nurses here and act like an angel. I know your game. Be Dr. Henry's pet? I am not his pet. I am his former patient. Patient? Yeah, I have the same form of brain cancer as Molly. I'm Dr. Henry's poster child. That's why he asked me to stay. I'm so sorry. I had no idea. 
There's a lot you don't know. Yes, like for example, how to be a doctor. You don't know how to do any sort of doctor type things or activities. Also, Rosie says that she's Dr. Henry's poster child. How did you get to be the poster child for not dying of cancer? Rosie's like, no, they literally have a poster of me up in the hallway. It says we somehow saved her. After being told off by Rosie, Kit begins to debrief after her rough day with Holden, with whom she has like a blossoming sort of romance happening. Today has been really bad. So, what's the prognosis? I guess I need some major heart surgery. You guess you do? Couldn't they be a little more specific with you? Like, where's the patient advocacy at Attaway General? This kid seems to not know what's going on with his heart. Also, don't we feel like Kit should have been aware of Holden's complications before she unplugged him from life support and started wheeling him around the perimeter of the hospital? <laughs> She's like, so how was your day? And he's like, well, I got put on a breathing tube. But all in all, we can see that their relationship is helping both of them have an easier time with their hard day. Kit, who briefly screamed at a childhood cancer survivor, and Holden, who has a serious medical condition where blood is spurting from his heart internally. Very similar days. And I'm excited to see how this story develops. So let's jump right into episode four. By the way, this one, episode three, was called glioblastoma. Maybe they mentioned glioblastoma at some point in the episode, but I don't remember them ever saying that, so the name of the title feels really random to me. Glioblastoma is rare. Regardless, the next episode is called The Sugar Kingdom. So the titling of the episode really doesn't make sense. Sometimes it's like sort of a, I guess, metaphor for what's going on in the hospital. Like episode two is called Dave and Goliath because we had the big guy and the little guy bullying each other. But then sometimes it's just like the name of a medical condition, like glioblastoma. What are they trying to do here? And this one's called The Sugar Kingdom, so I guess we're going to Candyland. Everyone saddle up. Let's dive into episode four and see what sort of malpractice we can get up to next. We start with Nurse Sandy giving us a joke that actually made me laugh for the first time I think since watching this. Attaway General. No, that is not a disease. That was funny to me. I didn't expect them to make me chuckle right off the bat. I did, however, expect a cool medical emergency to kick us off in the cold open, and this one that we get in episode four is a little less climactic than we're used to. Help! Kate, grab the wheelchair. That extended sequence of someone sitting down in a chair and being wheeled off screen was definitely effective enough without any additional dialogue. If you recall, a few episodes ago, Jack had a conversation with Nina about how he could maybe learn to love this place a little bit more. In this scene, Jack turns a corner both figuratively and literally by seeming a little more enthusiastic about his job today. Are you mad? Excuse me for just one moment. Whoa! Sorry, sometimes the acting is so bad that I have to puke into one of my potted plants. Luckily now there's so many to choose from. The way he is bouncing and hipping and skipping down this hallway, did somebody just get back from their birthday party at the Discovery Zone? Also, since when is Jack an origami master? These paper flowers look incredibly professional. You made this? Yep, spent all night making them. Who are you and what did you do with Jack? You're always so funny. Have I ever told you how funny you are, Nina? You're so funny. Have I ever told you how funny you are? You might have told me, but I probably thought that you were an air vent blowing out hot air because you have that little personality going on right now. Kit is taking care of that broken leg girl from the beginning, although the young man who brought her into the hospital is nowhere to be found. The patient's name is Bo, and she definitely gives us some comedic relief for this episode while also calling out Kit on her BS, which she sorely needed. Ugh, that's gotta hurt. You know you really do suck at this whole bedside manner thing. If it isn't bus boy. The one and only. How's my favorite doctor? I'm not a doctor. Oh, I know. I was asking about Dr. Henry. Can you guys stop flirting and someone scratch my knee, please? No, how about you guys stop flirting and then crush up some Demerol into my applesauce so I don't sit around and hear this? What kind of hospital puts someone with a hole in their heart that's pre-op in the same room as someone who has a sprained ankle? But Kit and Holden are both like, listen, you ill bitch, we're not flirting. Why don't you shut up and die? And she's like, okay, until this happens. Holden, I've been so worried about you. How are you? Hey, babe. 
I didn't see that coming. Kit, don't even worry about this lady coming in and macking on Holden, okay? She can't even put her hand on his shoulder without her finger getting all caught up in his garment there. Someone like that will not have the dexterity to change his bandages when he's dying of heart failure next year. Jack and Rosie are told by Nurse Sandy to start filing some files, but Jack, he's going crazy somehow. He's like, oh, I'm gonna do it my own way by listening to music. And Rosie's like, okay. Out in some other wing of the hospital, Georgia is still overseeing Molly our patient who has really aggressive, terrible cancer that causes her to look really healthy and happy. I'm not saying every form of cancer would cause you to look sick and emaciated, and I get that not every type of cancer requires you to get chemo where you lose your hair, but in the world of television, isn't it better to sell someone visually as sick by, I don't know, giving them some dark shadows under their eyes? Molly straight up looks like she's ready for another grilled cheese sandwich and an episode of Paw Patrol. She's not sick. She's sitting on top of the sheets of this bed, and she's having the time of her life. Because all these unsupervised kids, man, are getting the all the pudding and juice they could want on who? My dime? I don't know how taxes work, obviously. Anyway, Georgia is reading Molly a book called The Sugar Kingdom, even though the outside of the book says Wizard Wars. This is the third weird product I've seen on screen at Attaway General. We had that magazine in episode one called Le Chic, as well as that really generic looking orange juice. Attaway General exists in some weird Twilight Zone realm where everything came from a prop house. Almost would be boyfriend named Will comes in and they're having a fight right now. What are you doing here? I'm shadowing Dr. Henry for Molly's surgery, but only if it's okay with Molly. Don't let him do it. I'll think about it. Now sit down and listen. Georgia's telling a great story. Georgia's like, what are you doing here? And then Will is like, I shadow in Dr. Henry for Molly's surgery, but only Molly wants me to. I'm sorry, did somebody dip your chicken nuggets in glue at lunch today? Because you are not opening your mouth when you talk. Basically, Georgia uses the device of reading a story to call out Will on all of his philandering. She's like, there once was a happy dragon who made out with me in the supply closet. And then that happy dragon was talking to some Asian Asian girl in the hallway. Meanwhile, Molly is having the time of her life. She's like, this is the best cancer I've ever had. Kit is in her own personal hell because Holden is flirting with his girlfriend who randomly came in and is all of a sudden concerned about this boyfriend. It's like, girl, this guy has been in the hospital fainting all over the place, having heart holes. He's got a heart like Swiss cheese for four days now, four episodes, and you're just now arriving at the hospital. Fake friend, boo. And even though Kit is the one that's supposed to be taking care of Bo, Bo is somehow in the position of trying to make Kit feel feel better while she's all loopy on pain meds. I know a crush when I see one. Bo, you need to be quiet. I don't have a crush and I really don't want anyone to hear you and think I do. All right, Kit, it says here on the 24th of September, a patient complained that you told her she needs to be quiet. This is Kit in episode one. My whole life is being here to help patients and make them feel healthy and strong. Episode four, a patient goes, do you have a crush on that guy? And she goes, you better not say it. Word. You'll have three holes in your heart by the time you leave here. Back in the high stakes world of filing and putting away folders, we see Jack and Rosie having some conflict, but I'm just happy to finally see these teen volunteers working on a project that actual teen volunteers would be helping with. These kids are like, oh man, I've got to stop doing open heart surgery to put some files away. Not realistic. Do you mind if I turn the music down a little bit? Don't touch anything. You're going to ruin my system. Just think of it as a video game. Up, up. Down, down, left, right, left, right, your turn. Up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right. <laughs> I think I'm gonna need a cup of coffee if I'm even gonna try to attempt that. I'm sorry, how is that putting files away? You're not even picking anything up. Then you're just dancing. In no world is this a better system than simply putting the files on a shelf. Also, the diction and pronunciation in this episode is beyond me. Like, what did Rosie just say there? If I'm even gonna try to attempt that. Is your tongue made out of liquid? Are you a soup mouth? They could have just gotten one acting coach on set for this show and he or she could have helped all of these kids before every scene. Like it wouldn't have taken too much extra work to give some notes and be like, we lost you there. Can we pronunciate those words better? Take your time, breathe before you say the line, think about what you're saying. You know, there's like a famous acting coach who helped Hilary Duff on the set of Lizzie McGuire. And she basically credits her whole acting career to him because he was always there to help make the acting sound. It clearly worked. He was able to carry the show. And I'm just thinking, we need some of that sort of education on one of these sets if we're gonna make this thing watchable, right? It's just one extra crew position. It's not gonna break the budget, I swear. I'll do it. I'll do it for a fruit roll-up and a pack 
of Welch's fruit snacks. Georgia and Will continue to have some communication issues because for all we know, Will is a cheating whore for talking to someone else at work. Can we talk about us? I think we should keep this strictly professional. Does that mean I can't grab your boobs in the supply closet? Meanwhile, back inside with Bo, she's on like pain medication and giving us serious Rebel Wilson vibes. Okay, I'll be quiet. But you like him. I know it. I'm sorry, did they put her on nitrous oxide for a sprained ankle? Since when? Although I'm very happy to see that she has a cup of that trademark Attaway General Juice. They should do a spin-off line of Attaway General Juice and Pudding. I would eat it and drink it. They could put on the package, cures all cancers, stops internal bleeding, makes your boyfriend love you again, as seen by these kids. Jack's system proves to be challenging for Nurse Sandy to accept because it doesn't make any sense. What in the world is going on in here? Your system does not work. So I made my own. We'll fix it, Nurse Sandy, I promise. You have an hour, and only because it's you, Rosie. Or what? What happens in an hour, Nurse Sandy? You no longer need these files to be in the right place? Like, why can't they just write in some stakes here where they're like, this needs to be cleaned up in an hour or you're both fired? Give me some reason to understand that this is like a hard program, it's challenging, it's competitive, it's not easy to stay a part of. They could have even had some kid joining Attaway General with the four of them on the first day, and he slacks off or makes some mistake in a way that Nurse Sandy has to be like, you're out of here. And Nina can be like, that's how it works here. If you guys want to stay in the program and you really care about being a doctor, then you've got to focus. I think that's kind of what worked best about Grey's Anatomy is like, they're all residencies or doing their internships or whatever. And they all really want to be doctors. This is the last step before they achieve that goal. With Attaway General, we just see Jack having a no understanding of what he's doing here. Like, how would you ever think that inflating some rubber gloves and putting them on the shelf would be a better system for us here? They're like, great work, Jack. You're such a special teen volunteer that we're actually moving you into this wing where we have nice padded room. And he continues to not get it, even when Rosie is like, thanks for ruining this for us. Let's do it over. We need to put this back. What? No way. My system's so much better. Jack, stop, please. Just go home. Whatever. Is Jack struggling with an amphetamine addiction? Cause he's acting majorly off the wall right now. I'm sure we'll get more info on that in episode five or six. But meanwhile, Will gets an understanding of why George is acting so cagey towards him. How's it going with the fresh meat? You said something to her, didn't you? I didn't say anything that wasn't true. Just something that wasn't your business and you had no place saying. Appreciate that. Thanks me. Great working with you. It's a good thing none of these kids are actual doctors or nurses or they would be much more busy trying to, I don't know, help save lives. Hospitals are so insanely busy, but they're acting like this is like homeroom. But back on the floor, our girls are really starting to bond. You know what? We don't need boys. You know what will make us better? The program and each other and getting these files organized before Nurse Sandy comes back. And learning to build some chemistry into the story so that we feel some authenticity in your relationship before trying to shoehorn it in at the last 30 seconds of the episode. That could be fun too. <laughs> Like seriously, these people were fighting an episode ago and now all of a sudden she's like, you know what will make us stronger? Friendship, womanhood, feminism, power of being together. That's what this show's all about, we just decided. The director has his web series bingo card and he's like, okay, force in some emotional connection right before the end, good. Sorry to interrupt, but I'm looking for a patient. Her name is Bo. She's in room six, I'll show you. I guess not all boys are bad. <laughs> Aw, oh, Bo was sad because the boy she liked wasn't with her in the hospital, but he was really just out getting her a teddy bear that took 12 hours. Most hospitals have a gift shop. I don't know why he had to go and make that a Build-A-Bear for her. But either way, I'm just happy to see that everything is ending on a nice note for most of the people at Attaway General. Jack, we still got our eye on you because I'm a little nervous about this erratic behavior. Seems like he might be up to some bad boy ways that we have to watch out for. What do you guys think of Attaway General? Do you have any leftover medical equipment sewn up inside your chest cavity? Let me know in the comments below. Also, what other shows and shorts should we cover on YouTube or on the internet? Let me know in the comments below, as well as full-length movies. Check out my playlist of other clip breakdowns in the playlist below, merch links as well. But most importantly, give this video a big thumbs up if you wanna see even more clip breakdowns just like this. It's a great way to support my channel. And most importantly, if you're new here, I would love to have you click that subscribe button right down there. That way you never miss new videos from me. I upload two new ones every week where we break down the latest in movies and TV and media clip by clip. Hit that notification bell, that way you'll always be up to date when I upload. You guys are all the greatest. Thank you for getting some pudding and juice in your system with me today. I will see you next time.